Well, how's it going today? Good day to you. So if I leave a cup in the car, I get yelled at. Somebody else does. Somebody leaves two cups in the car. They get off scot-free. Oh well. That's okay. Okie dokie, okay. So, a little, I don't know, a little adventure today. Bonus footage, whatever you want to call it. Um, part of the great Connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. Don't forget to say disconnected when we get out of range. Okay. And how do you propose we do anything here? Disconnected. Come on, get going. To excuse my temper, it's not very, it's very short today. Let's see, how are we going to do this? Okay, we'll go this way. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. Um, collect my thoughts here. Well, anyway. So, part of the network of spies. Uh, a friend that works in the um, paging industry. Amazingly enough, paging is still alive. They have used to be paging in mobile telephones, true mobile telephones, not uh, that had the mobile operator. We're taking a kind of a trip back in time there. And some other stuff, anyway. That's all kind of changed nowadays. Anyway, um, one of the, I guess for lack of a better word, one of the commodities is tower space. And they had a mobile or a cellular telephone not a mobile telephone they're different a carrier on one of their towers anyway the place got if I understand correctly the place got bought up or bought out and basically in a nutshell the old carrier just abandoned the equipment in place and then paid the renter the, the site or the rentee the place they were renting from, space from. Did that come out right? I don't know, let's just keep going on. Anyway, they paid them and said, here, here's some money, clean it up yourself, you know. So they, if they had a deposit, they lost it, you know, that's fine. So that's a windfall for uh, us. So there's a whole bunch of cellular telephone goodies to play with and have for the grabbing and the... Uh, the upshot of that is we get goodies to play with, and the other upshot is the place that was renting the space gets their uh, facility cleaned out for probably nothing. You know, we're not going to charge them. I just want some stuff to play with. I'm happy with that. So we got to go over and meet. This is on a Sunday about 10 o'clock. Let's see. Uh, that's the date. That's the target date. So I'm not sure exactly what there's there. And I'm not even sure exactly what we're going to get to get a hold of to play with. My understanding is there's some battery banks. There's some... What are you guys waiting for? What is with this this morning? Oh, guys, quit fooling with your phones. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're dinking with our phones. And... Uh, so there'll be some other goodies to play with. Uh, you know, switch gear, racks, stuff. And they've already got a new uh, company that wants to move in and rent the space, so they kind of need to hurry and get this out. The other reason I'm doing this is I just really have a hard time, in case you can't tell, huh, gas went up, that sucks. Uh, I have a hard time with um, the usable stuff going in the trash. It really irritates me. We're just such a throwaway society. It's a nasty habit. You know... And that's the way we get out of things nowadays, is we just throw money at a problem and make it somebody else's problem. Kind of like what we're doing to China, in my opinion. They've become the world's manufacturing center, and they've also become the world's dump site for every 
toxic chemical on it you can think of. Well, one of these days they'll get tired of it and then it'll, you want to stay in your lane. Man, people are just bad drivers at Sunday. He's right off my shoulder here. There he is. Creeping forward, being a doof. Oh, the little barber shop went under. Damn it. There's a little building back there. If I think about it, we'll come back that way. It's literally a door, a bathroom, and, and a barber chair. And it's about the size of a dime anyway. We lose a lot of little businesses. Well, maybe they'll get there early. So I brought a bunch of tools. I don't know what, I mean, I assume there's some tools available, but never make an assumption. Uh, you never know. So this is uh, Sunday morning. It's pretty quiet here in town. It's a little busy. So I'm all pumped up. I drank a couple buzzy sodas and I wound up tighter than the eight-day watch. And I'm very grumpy. Don't worry, the buzzy soda wore off in about an hour. So yeah, right here is the hospital. Um, so the, apparently they're, I don't know if they're gonna gut the thing or whatever, they're turning it into apartments. That sounds pretty scary, they'll have to gut it. So yeah, right here. So I don't know what, and they still have the emergency room, but the, I don't know what, and Boys Town is over here, Boys Town, uh, the National Institute for Hearing, I believe it is, or Boys Town Hospital, I don't know if that's still a hospital or not. The Laird Learning and Technology Center, I don't know what that is. This hotel right here, it wasn't here when I was a kid, or when I worked here. All the little houses that are here are gone. <sighs> Times change. Used to be a lot of stuff down here and it's all kind of come crumbling down. So uh, over here, there's the one of the towers and right on the edge here is the monopole for the cell site. I guess this is where it's at. Weird. They still have people work here. Come on, we're not gonna doodle around all freaking day. This used to be a transmitter site here, but it looks like they've got these self-standing little sheds now. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay. And I don't know what we got here. Another freestanding shed, and then there's something over there. I don't know. I guess we'll just wait. Oh, there we go. Where are we at? Okay, we must be over here. Okie dokie. We'll be back in a minute. So we're in. So this is the the monopole and all these. This is Kevin. 250 foot. 250 foot to the top. And uh, we have a lot of big bolts. So 
Guess Kevin says all these goodies are up for grabs. Oh, look at the goodies. It's pretty dramatic. Wow, it is dramatic. And there's another one like Oh, it. and there's even a friendly warning about poking your hand in fans. Uh-huh. The leftover battery maintenance books. And, man, they just they really did abandon the place. They did. They just walked away. Well, they didn't you tell me they paid paid money and said here's some money and yeah, we'll clean up the mess? They paid the boss a chunk of money to leave it. <laughs> Sweet. What's so that's the battery cabinets, the little one. So this is the same thing. This is More a, or less. Uh, did you say there's a like a there were three this well, was rubber stamped three times? Yeah, well it's three. Oh, okay. In in each cabinet. Three sets of transceivers, yeah. So what do we got lots here? Lots of SMAs and lots of little dividers. A cute little light. Um, was this from the factory? Uh, as far as I can tell, yeah. That's your work light when you're out what here. What is this trap door? Uh, if the cooling isn't working correctly, this opens up. Oh, it's got a spring-loaded thermostat or something? Uh -huh. okay. Otherwise, it goes through a filter in the back. Really? Is that what that bulge is here? Yeah. So and they just got a jumper up to these coax? Fan panel right here. I mean, it says 20 amps. Holy crap. For this fan panel, it shoves air up or down. I don't know which way it well, goes. Well, is I this... Think it goes up. What the hell? There's no... That is a ballistic shield. Oh, in case it punches through the ice grid? Well, they designed these so they didn't have to have an ice grid. But oh, oh, so we got a bonus. All this stuff has ice shields. What's this, the transfer? Is this the, like the uh, switch gear? One side's telco. Oh, this is how they get the data into the place. Mm-hmm, yeah. Oh, one side's telco and the other side's uh, power switch gear. Okay. Right. And then so the kludgy stuff is the important stuff. And over here is the power, which... You get a, has a throw over for a generator. Did they have a generator? No. Um, oh, they just ran off the battery bank and yeah. hoped for the best. Then you get some free ivy. Yeah, free ivy. The GPS head is right up here. That little bullet. I think there's two of them, actually. Oh, there's, well, wait a minute. Uh, these these, two, these uh, two over here are both for this side. Oh, here it is. Okay. And so this is From the, what I can tell, down here in the corner was the thing that said something about 15 megahertz. Oh, the disciplined oscillator? Yeah, I think it's this bottom thing here. Um, it says 15, 15, 15, and 15. Ow. So I think that dude there... Oh, it's a distribution panel then? Mm-hmm. Now it may be... What the hell's that left over? Monitoring? Sparrows. I don't know. It's just the distribution. This is Lucent, so they did everything. Themselves, huh? Here's those 1500 watt, 24 volt supply. This all. This is all shut down? Yeah. Okay. Uh, those come right out. Um, it's amazing. You know, when they started all this, it was a whole building full of stuff, and now it's all crammed down, it's to, down a, to this. Just yeah. a little gerbil cage here. Yeah, there's a little cross connect here <laughs> that's awesome so they can they just do everything right there oh they got uh, 110 connections oh they got alarm double doubled up alarm contactors and airflow sensors oh to see that the cage or the things pressurized everything's grounded uh, some kind of distribution here it kind of runs off there so we so we're gonna uh, we're just we're, are we literally yanking this off the ground then too? Yeah. Okay, so it's got. So they're going to come. The new place is going to come, and they just want the pad and the connections. I gotcha. Okay. And so. Oh, and this what, is the duct. Yeah, and whatever we do with it. Okay. Here is the problem spot. For me, is I don't have any of these. Well, I've, but yeah, I. But they enough button head. I think. I we think can we can. Yeah. Get on them with a. If worse comes to worst, I've got one of those cut off wheel. At home, I can go back home. Okay. We could we could cut a slot in it. All right. So they just... I haven't figured out how these terminate, but there's the same kind of screws on the top of here, and I think that's where all the coax connectors screw onto this. What the hell is this? What the that hell? was to keep people to let them know somebody stole the ground bar. Everybody was stealing these ground bars, Fuck. cutting them off the towers. So when they break that little piece of telephone wire, oh, it's a off. contactor. Nice. Where's the alarm interface and stuff in this tub then? That's hard to say. 
This is the RF. This is just your, well, here, alarm fuse. Is this it here, status? Yeah, um, here we go, here we go. Yeah, that's possible. And then there was something down here that said. So they got a little utility alarms. outlet in case you need to run your drill or whatever. Mm -hmm. Some power for. But I doubt if they did anything like that. They played uh, no. plug and chug and away you went, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go in my office and get the. Oh, you got to. This is just sitting there, except for that. It, it apparently stood under the fact that it had two, uh, ten and a half batteries in it. And I think this one's probably the same way. Yep. You can get a bit of a hint here because they're missing some screws. What the hell? Those were spacers between the batteries. All the batteries hooked on like this and then plugged on with a pin. There's a bus down the side. You can see here in the Mimic bus how it was oh. wired. Weird. It's. I don't know what the foam's about. It looks like it's a, a breather, filter. I guess, yeah. Just to gas the thing out. Okie dokie. Well, Somebody so. paid some big bucks for this. Yeah, thing. it's nice to know that they can made enough money they can afford to just walk away from it and pay money to have it cleaned up. And the nice thing is all we got to do is get it small enough to move and put in that building over there, which is also scrap. Which one, the little one there? Yeah, uh-huh. Well, hang on a tick. What were they doing for cooling? This thing is so tiny. It just breathes air. Really? Yep. Oh, there's there's who the carrier was. And back here is like well, wait a minute. We've had like some 100 degree days. There's well, not a lot of heat transfer on 100 degrees. It's designed to run that way. It makes a lot of fan noise. Oh, so it sounds like a taxing bomber. Pretty much. This is awesome. Um, that is a really big bolt. Well, we'll see you in a bit after the party's over. So after some gnawing and mashing of teeth, we're kind of stripping things down here. Kevin's, we're trying to figure out how to get these power modules out and it doesn't look like a very friendly job. There's a little tray up here and a lot of junk. Yeah, that GPS connector just necks down into nothing. It's just about loose. So there's big glands here, and this all scurries up here, and then Kevin pointed out they have lightning protection in the form of quarter wave stubs there, which is very clever. See what happens when you watch something? You learn something Look every... Look how clean it is in here. Every, yeah, it's just a little dust. Yeah, every day. it's been here 10 years. Every day. Well, it's all sealed. If this works, okay. your module's set So we're trying to get the module out, and I think it's a two-handed job. Yeah, okay, let me shut That's you off it, here. Huh? Well, all there is left yeah, is a big... Yeah, we got a bucket of parts. We put everything away, it's gonna rain. So I guess we'll get everything home that we play, got to play with and look at it. Anyway, oh, we'll going? So, here's a few of the... Yes, my neighbors are at it again. Here's a few of the goodies out of the uh, cell phone site. Only oh, ran off with things I knew anything about. This is up uh, in the telephone company world things aren't battery chargers they're called rectifiers so this is a rectifier rack it sat in there this way there you go anyway they have different power modules they just keep adding them up so apparently this thing can have about 6,000 watts of 24 volt charging power and I assume it's charging and running power most uh, telephone stuff is 48 volts, but this all is 24. So these just kind of pop out. There's a little latch there, and we're missing two banks. That's all they, apparently they, that's all they needed. It's kind of interesting. It says this is a controller, but I don't believe that's true. I think it's just a damn great big line filter is what it is. This is made by Power One. And then there's some sort of a, I think this is just an alarm contactor. So next time your phone or your cell phone company tells you how oh, poor they are, they don't make any money, tell me, well, and quit throwing away usable stuff. <laughs> so here's a kind of a power distribution assembly. This sat in there above the power supply assembly. It sat upright and there's fusing and alarm panels and contactors. There's some cool stuff in here. This thing is a real moose. Here's a big contactor that this thing must be rated. This uh, 
this whole bus had uh, heavy gauge wiring, like number zero wiring with double nutting on the leads. And there's four buses, plus an auxiliary bus of up to 100 and it says 75 amps. So this went on into the equipment rectifier, which was over there we looked at, paralleled up here. And it's uh, kind of a moose, and this is the uh, current shunt, and it's rated at 800 milliamps, or excuse me, 800 amps. Uh, so that means that this contact was probably rated at something quite high. It's 24 volt, but it's a real moose. You can see it. And I think all the batteries tied to here and went out of the chassis. So this is, again, kind of a power distribution alarm system. There's a little auxiliary thing. There's some different fusing here. They got about one of every fuse they ever made known. Uh, they get the little kind of glass fuse. These are these are kind of cool. A phone company used to use these all the time. I don't know if they still do or not. They used to call these grasshopper fuses. What the deal is is there's a little tiny. Maybe I can get that out of there without a fight. Work so much with my hands today they're cramping up and it is not fun oh man anyway there's a little tiny blade there I don't know if you can see that red mark when the fuse blows that little spring-loaded assembly pops and flies up and hits that contact there and then supplies voltage these have three leads so this is the actual circuit here and this is the alarm contactor can you guys make any more freaking noise so when that that's that's how the alarm goes off in this and there's a little window there you can see when it turns that red that that's popped These are all labeled. And this is a kind of a big giant car fuse, the alarm controller board. So this is kind of sort of similar to most automobiles. Uh, all the alarms come together and just trip uh, one light that says something is wrong and your job is to figure it out. So that's what all these leads are here. And when the, when the fuse blows open, it goes dead, trips this little matrix board here. These are big shaman fuses. These are damn fast fuses, and they're not cheap. Uh, so, in addition to that, there's some oh, very heavy other junk. We're just, just looking at the junk. So the power distribution or rectifier blocks actually sat. There was two of them that sat on here in parallel, and they fed uh, 200 really. My enemy. <sighs> so I... Anyway, they they sat on top of here. There was two of those assemblies, and they're fed uh, 240 volts mains power. Got to keep things efficient. So here's the primary rectifier shelf. Online. There's the auxiliary. Um, there are some heater mats for the batteries. And there's a heater for the cabinet. And then there's a service outlet for a technician to use, plug his, I don't know, hair dryer into. <laughs> so this is all very cool and very hip. There's a lot of cool plugs. So under here is just, there's a big interface where the mains power came in. So torque specifications, how to hook that up. This is kind of interesting because they're using red and black wiring for mains power it's kind of a no-no in my book this is ground here and neutral and this is all wired up in here there's actually uh, one of those din rail type things that all goes in there so there's some usable goodies in there there's a lot of nice grounds there's a lot of heavy duty wiring in here that's like number 10 it's all heat shrunk down and 
this will tell us how to hook up the rectifier blocks that uh, has a wire nut and a little skinny ground it's actually a neutral it really isn't a ground neutral and ground are two different things so there's all sorts of fun things to play with here there's a lot of cool hip wiring and little chunks of wire and noisy neighbors with their bumping music I might have to take that big contactor out of there and that definitely take that out of there I don't know, I'll try and put, I might try and put this back together and fire this up just to see what it does for the fun of it. Anyway, that's some of the junk. Some of the things I got a hold of was, um, this was, had a GPS disciplined oscillator, actually a pair of them, but they look a little hazy as to far as, they're in a big chassis, and they appear to be on some kind of a card, and I don't know. I figured out how the antenna, there's an antenna that's fed with a power inserter and a, a power divider but I don't know if my chances are going to be very good about getting that up and running it's not a standalone module it's a blade inside a module that is one damn big fly over there okay well there's some other stuff too there's some big power amplifiers and uh, tons of cabling and a lot of weird stuff there's a lot of hardware a lot of uh, stainless steel hardware coax jumpers and some funky adapters and stuff but this is just some of the stuff i screwed off with to play with it looked fun it looked usable some of this other stuff maybe not so usable so i don't know there's some interfaces and stuff for t-span to connect to and stuff yeah it looked like there was a a switch in there like an ethernet switch and there might have been some fiber jebic modules there's some fun stuff in there i'll have to do a little more exploring anyway this is as much as i got today there's two of these there's actually a couple more of these to wreck out there's some power dividers and some other funky stuff although i question how usable some of this stuff is it might be at a frequency that uh, is a little bit above my normal mood anyway there you go there's some of the junk we got have a groovy day, and we'll see more of it later.